All right. So I'm Kalia, Kalia Livingston. I am the chair of the board of directors here at the Peace and Justice Center. I have been on the board for about a year or so now, a little over a year. Um, it's been a lot of fun, definitely a pleasure. Um, we have a very short agenda today. However, I think it'll be filled with lots of good information and updates. Um, we're just gonna start with having you all do introductions in the chat. Just give us your name and your pronouns, maybe something you're excited to hear today or your affiliation to PJC, whatever you feel is most pertinent. Um, from there, we will move into staff updates and introductions, and then we'll move into updates from some of our allied groups who are joining us today. And from there, um, the board will introduce ourselves and we'll vote on board positions, and then we'll end the meeting with some questions and comments from all of you. We have Eris Garcia here who will be moderating the chat, which is awesome. Thank you, Eris. Um, Hello, everyone. Oh, we're already seeing some introductions. Awesome. Hi, Wendy. Okay, I think we should just get right into staff updates. So we'll start off with Rachel, our executive director. Hi, everybody. Really nice to see you all. I wish we were all in a room together, eating snacks, drinking tea. Um, but here we are, and it's it's nice that people could show up and didn't have to leave their houses every now and then. That is nice. I see Kristen's got her tea, so um, nice. Um, we thought that the big news this year was going to be that Wendy, one of our founders and on staff as the operations director for 41 years retired and that there would be a new ED and that I'd be moving on. Those were going to be the biggest news of the year. Wendy did leave and that is big news. And it's been a big adjustment, um, but I didn't leave because COVID hit um, as we were starting the transition process and it just wasn't the right time. And I said, I'll, I'll stay and ride out this storm. And then we were like, wait, how long is this storm? And um, they have restarted the process to move toward a transition. So it's still happening, it's just delayed. And I'm happy that I could be here and that it was supportive for people to have me stay. And I was glad to have the flexibility to do that. Um, so the beginning of the year, it's sometimes hard to remember, but it was a you know sort of regular busy time for us where there was lots of work to do, lots of people in Vermont doing different organizing and action work that we were supporting in small ways and in bigger, more official ways with fiscal sponsorship and more. We were doing all of our regular educational programs for the public and also by contract for different groups. We were doing the activist development work that we do largely with interns and volunteers. And we were running our store and you know, we were cruising along, sort of bumping along. Things are not easy doing this work. But then COVID hit, you know, we transitioned. Wendy left, which was a huge transition. Um, and then COVID hit, which was, you know, it, it rocked everyone's world, right? Everybody's got their COVID narrative. And ours in the beginning was just that, you know, everything got very quiet. We shut the store, we canceled all our programs, we slowed way down. We did lots of sort of internal self-education work, cleanup projects, website cleanup. And then the, the uprisings against the police murder of black people started after George Floyd's murder. So then suddenly our work went from like zero to a hundred over the course of a couple of days. And we were in high demand for support for, um, for protests that were happening immediately, we started getting an unprecedented amount of requests for educational programs on racial justice. And uh, we started trying to figure out how to sell things again. So we've been in fast motion. And I have to say that the, the stress of COVID and of the, of the, you know, the world and specifically the racism 
that has become, you know, even more obvious yet again, as if it could get more obvious, um, ha had an impact on the staff that we had some hard times and we were really fortunate to be able to work with Catherine Caden and Jesse Weens who run an organization called Bab Baba Tree International. And they did a circle process with us that brought us much closer together and to a new place with agreements about power and relationships so that we can build much more trust and understanding amongst ourselves, which is really exciting to think about. Again, as I transition out that we're that we've created this really beautiful space to welcome someone into. Um, so I think that's my update. If people have questions later, I can share more. Uh, but I will share a little bit on Kina's behalf. Kina Thorpe is not able to be with us this weekend, but she is our programming manager who oversees all of our educational programming. And like I said, there's been an unprecedented number of requests for programs by contract, and they are from nonprofits like Feeding Chittenden and um, CVOEO, uh, Businesses for Social Responsibility, and they're from schools like the Waldorf School and um, I should have written myself a list because of course I can't think of them now, but there's like 40 of them in the last three months. It's wild. And then also our public programs, which have been just filling up at an unbelievable rate once we list them publicly. It's really exciting. So she has also been working really hard, Kina, to develop new facilitators to work with and has created more systems to hold people accountable and to really fully train people and onboard them. And it's great to be a growing group. Um, yeah, that's what I'll say on Kina's behalf. And uh, you'll hear from her. She writes the e-news every two weeks. So hopefully you get a chance to see that and keep up with us that way. It's, it's a labor of love for her and it's just packed with information. And we do get a really high open rate. And I, I hope some of you are also checking it out. And if you ever have things that you'd like us to put in it, please let us know. And that's what I'll say for now. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Eris. I'm the volunteer coordinator and the assistant store manager. Um, and we, COVID was intense, clearly. Um, but the year for the store and for volunteers was pretty solid. Um, aside from having to close, um, obviously, uh, right before COVID, we had updated the store. We were in the process of renovating. Um, we got new floors installed, donated, which was even better. Um, and when COVID happened, um, Amy, who is our store manager and is, won't be able to join us today, um, Amy was able to take that time during COVID to be able to focus on um, sorry, my cat is going to try to say hi, um, <laughs> try to focus on managing our inventory in a way that would be sustainable for the organization. We have a lot of products in our store and we're really proud of all the vendors that we um, support, but um, some of the things that we have just are not sustainable. So we, we took the time to be able to go through everything. And now um, because of COVID, we have kind of shifted gears and decided to launch an e-commerce, um, an online platform store that you'll be able to access um, come November, uh, excuse me, October 30th next week, um, it will be launching. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, Rachel, did you want me to uh, screen share now? Do you guys wanna see the store? <laughs> I can show you what the store is gonna look like. You get a sneak peek preview. Um, nobody else has seen it yet. So just give me one second. So you can be the first and uh, if you have any quick feedback or anything, pop it in the chat. Um, and I will take that into consideration as we get ready to launch. Um, so anything, if you love it, if you hate it, all feedback is good feedback, especially right now before we launch. Um, so you should be able to see our beautiful store. Can everybody see the storefront? All, so this is actually, um, these uh, little stones here are soapstone and they're Kesey stones from one of our vendors. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll be able to go directly to our website. 
um, the pjcvt.org, and there will be a um, link that will bring you to this platform. Uh, so everything is all in one place. So it'll be super easy. To start off with, we are launching our top 25 SKUs um, and all of our perishables. We are being really cognizant of making sure that we can support the vendors um, and artisans who have products that expire. Um, we want to make sure that we continue to be in integrity when we are acting and selling things through and under a fair trade label. And so being able to maintain a sustainable relationship with these vendors is really important to us. Um, so you'll see Divine Chocolate here, Makaya Coffee from Pierre Um, People will also be able to pick up Black Lives Matter signs, which was a huge deal um, in the middle of COVID. Um, at, the, at the beginning of summer, we did open for a short time in the store to be able to offer those to the community, which was a huge success. We brought in um, over, I think we sold something over 150 signs and people donated in a range from $10 all the way to hundreds of dollars um, just for BLM signs, which was really quite beautiful. Uh, so you'll just see that we have it all set up here. These are all the different things you'll be able to buy right now. Um, and we will be extending our offerings as soon as we can figure out what is gonna be the best for us. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and everybody who's that will, here. Is, ahead. Everyone who is here is gonna get a one-time 30% yeah. off uh, coupon. That's right. So um, I we will be sending you, we'll have a list of everybody who's joined today. Um, so you will get a coupon for the store. Um, which will be, like Rachel said, 30% off um, for our launch. It will only be for a month, so you'll definitely want to make sure you use it as soon as you get it. Um, and you will be open for curbside pickup, or we will be doing some shipping uh, for folks who don't live in the Burlington area and who need to get their pride flags, their BLM signs, their coffee, um, whatever else it may be. So it'll be super easy and user-friendly. Um, and we're very excited. Amy has worked really hard on the background, on the back end to be able to put all of these things in here. And this is a huge labor that we are really excited to be able to offer, not only to you as our members, but especially as our community members. Um, and it will allow us to have sustainable relationships, which is really the key to all of this. Um, a little bit, that was for Amy, a little bit about volunteers. COVID was really hard, but it was also actually really beautiful. Volunteers gatherings started to be done online. And I see quite a few uh, faces here who have been coming regular to the gatherings. And um, we've been having some beautiful conversations uh, in our gatherings. We've been learning some skills because we are all online, we have new needs. Um, so being able to have people host Zoom meetings for us and be our back end support, um, those kind of volunteer needs are new for us. And I really appreciate the volunteers who have stepped up and taken on those extra responsibilities and really been there for us. Um, so I, a quick thank you to you. And then also, if anybody's interested, um, go ahead and go to the website and fill out the volunteer form and I can get you started with a new task because um, there is plenty to do from home right now. And if you are feeling comfortable, you can help us with the launch of the store. There's things to be done in the center and we definitely will need help with those things also. Um, something else that I personally am really proud of that I did this year um, was I, we were very lucky to have uh, time donated from a place called Knoll Farm, and we hosted our first ever BIPOC retreat for all of the folks who are on our board, who are BIPOC, our staff, and our Racial Justice Advisory Committee. Um, and hopefully we have cultivated an amazing relationship to be able to continue that um, program every year. Um, so we're already in the talks about how to get one going for this coming year, um, which has really been amazing. Having that time to get to know each other in a safe environment that was quarantined um, was really special, I think, to all of us and um, really re-energized us, the BIPOC that helped run this organization. Um, especially during this time of COVID and the racial uprisings. And we just, it was really nice to have that time. So that was something I was really excited about to be able to offer and to participate and guide. Um, so thank you for those who were able to come. And also thank you to those who are gonna support next year's BIPOC retreat. 
we'll be um, fundraising to make that happen. So definitely look out for that in a future e-news um, from Tina. So other than that, I think that's everything I have on behalf of Amy and myself. I appreciate all of you being here. Um, I'll just pass it along to Josh. Hello, my name is Joshua. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the newest member to the PJC. It's an honor to be here and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. I've had communications with quite a few of you. So, and I've wrote checks to others. So it's been like nice to put a face to it. Um, and thank you for all the contributions and donations. Everything really is meaningful. And it's like, as you've heard already, a lot of it's been going towards really wonderful causes and things that we've been doing this year. Um, some of the, I, so since I took over, there's been a lot of backlog of information. So uh, one of the main things that I've been doing is just making sure that all of our um, documents, our paper and digital records from last year are just being updated. Aside from that, one of the projects that I've been a part of that's been really exciting and engaging for me was uh, we've been trying to update our server. So we currently have an older server in the office and we are trying to decommission this and switch transition into a more online um, cloud-based platform. Uh, this would allow us to upgrade our, our house security and uh, make sure that establish a new firewall and just things like that. That'll just make um, all of our finances and all of our records just be a little bit more private and protected. Uh, another thing that we're kind of working on here um, would be, you know, I've just been maintaining a lot of different things and just trying to work on trying to transition things a little bit more efficiently. So uh, another item would be uh, the pay data. We're working with this new company to start our payroll. So we're just trying to start, you know, tighten up some areas, uh, take some of the, the tasks that I've been in charge of or the, what Wendy was doing before me and uh, just try to streamline some of these things in a way that it will make it uh, a little more efficient, essentially. But it's been wonderful and I'm glad to be here. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks so much, Josh, and to the rest of staff for those great introductions. Um, now I'd like to move into updates from allied groups. And hey, ideally, hey, Leah, sorry, before you do that, since some people came late, maybe reintroduce yourself too. Would you do you mind? Sure. I'm Kalia. I'm the chair of the board of directors here at PJC. Um, and you'll hear a little more about me when the board introduces ourselves in a few agenda items. Um, so next, I would like to move into updates from allied groups. Ideally, if people could keep their introductions to about a minute or so, that would be awesome. So we have time for everybody to speak. Um, Julia, can I cut in again? I'm sorry. Sure. I realized we didn't talk about this when we were setting the agenda, that it probably makes sense just to say a sentence or two about what the allied groups are, um, because it's a huge part of what we do. We offer fiscal sponsorship to other groups all around the state if they're doing work that's mission aligned. And um, the fiscal sponsorship's a huge part. We do all their bookkeeping, and then there's other infrastructure that we're also able to share. And there's about a dozen active groups right now, so you'll hear from a few. Sorry to cut you off again, Kalia. That's okay. I think that was important. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so to start, let me just make sure Lydia is here. Um, we have Lydia Diamond from Brooklyn Strong here to give us some updates and a brief introduction. Lydia, are you here? Um, I see her. She may not be ready, so I'll wait and we'll move to the next group. Um, Kathy Shapiro from Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm Kathy Shapiro, um, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine um, has been um, a group uh, that's been around for over 20 years. I've been with them for about 10. Also, um, Wafiq Fawar is, is here from our group and um, I'd like him to add anything that I forget. Um, so we, um, we support, um, our actions are largely education, informing people about um, Palestinian rights and um, particularly the um, 
the uh, in their struggle for human rights and for self determination and um, and for the right of return and an end um, an end to the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land, and we work with various other groups to educate people and um, some of our current ongoing activities despite COVID are um, a television program on public TV, which can be accessed through Vimeo or your public TV channel called Salam Shalom, which Mark Hage does. Um, he has restarted that. Um, he shows films and interviews people on various aspects of of Palestine and their and the Palestinian struggle for rights and the BDS movement, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. Um, Mark Hage also contributes, and some of us have, some others of us have contributed uh, every two weeks to the Peace and Justice Center um, biweekly uh, e-newsletter. So you should see something in every newsletter. Um, usually by Mark about what's going on um, with Palestinian rights, what's going on right now with Palestine. Um, we have been uh, hampered obviously by COVID um, and things that we normally do on an annual basis. Um, we have a campaign against Ben and Jerry's, the, the Ben and Jerry's finest, the company in, um, based in Burlington, which is, um, which is in some ways, it is part of Unilever, but it is a Vermont company. And we, our campaign is to get Ben and Jerry's to withdraw the franchise that they have in Israel, which sells their ice cream in illegal Jewish settlements in Palestinian occupied territory. And we, that campaign is many years old. It's part, of, um, it's part of the BDS campaign. And we're very happy to say that um, I think a couple of years ago, um, uh, the Peace and Justice Center also endorsed the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign. Um, other issues we're constantly fighting with are um, legislation against the right of um, students to organize for Palestinian solidarity and accusations of anti-Semitism um, that any criticism of Israel equals anti-Semitism, which it does not. And, um, and these issues pop up all the time at UVM and elsewhere. And, um, and we're engaged in letter writing or anyway, those, those are just not to go on and on, a few of the issues that um, we deal with and we're not very many people. And um, <laughs> once again, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to do this work um, in the time of COVID. And uh, if, if it's possible, maybe Wafiq can, can say something about the work that he does on behalf of VTJP with other organizations. Kathy, uh, we actually have to move on to the next group just because okay. I want to limit how much time each group sure. talks. Thank yeah. you so much for that introduction. You're Lydia, I see you're back on the call. Are you ready to give us an introduction and brief updates? We're hoping to keep each introduction to about a minute or a minute and a half or so. Is she unmuted? Hi. Hi. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, Hello? we can hear you. We can oh, hear you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm at the park with the people's kitchen. We about to serve food. But um, I'm Lydia Diamond. Uh, uh, Brooklyn Strong is my organization or our organization, so to speak. Brooklyn Strong is uh, named after my granddaughter. She just turned nine last Sunday and she was diagnosed with um, chronic myeloid leukemia. 
Now, um, in the brief time that I've been with you guys, um, I've been through a lot and I need more assistance from all of you. Uh, I don't know you all, but I would like to get to know you better. And I would like more hands-on assistance with certain things. Like Rachel, you mentioned that uh, you guys do our bookkeeping. I didn't know that. I need to know that. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna stop it right there. I really appreciate y'all. And I want um, this Childhood Cancer Society Brooklyn Strong to be successful because we have children in our own community that need us. They need our support, they need our love, they need all that they are entitled to. And um, that's it. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Lydia. Woo. Thanks, Lydia. I just wanna say, I will send you an email and we can kind of set a time to have further conversations about what we can do for you to be in support and assistance. So that'd be wonderful to set up. I would greatly appreciate it. What's your name again? I'm Joshua. I'm the operations manager. So we could definitely nice figure that out. Nice to officially meet you, Joshua. Likewise. Nice to officially meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lydia. All right. Um, moving into hearing from Heather from from Two Creative Community. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Here we go. Yeah. You're um, I can hear you, Heather. You're unmuted, but you should turn up your phone maybe volume on your phone or hold it closer to your mouth okay i think it's better right a little bit just speak okay. loudly okay sorry hi i'm heather and i'm from two creative community which is a two c for short and it means to to see to understand the need to design with our planet in mind and teach these techniques to all we are an arts organization and um we just moved from Winooski, which was our studio, to Milton, Vermont, where uh, right now we're on 18 acres. So um, hoping to have um, some artist residencies starting and uh, trying to start a BIPOC artist residency and, um, and hopefully to start a sculpture park with performances and markets happening through um, whenever COVID could allow for things like that. But since we have all this acreage right now, it seems like a good thing rather than being in a building itself. So um, thank you so much for being our allied group and um, we look forward to some more online programming and um, more arts for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. Next, we have Coach Christie from the Social Equity Caucus and Task Force. Hello, everybody. Uh, beautiful day in Vermont. Um, I, I'm going to keep this uh, brief. Uh, I've, I put a description letter together uh, for, I'm going to, I'll share that with Joshua and he can uh, maybe share it with, with everyone. But to very briefly uh, start, um, the Social Equity Caucus is a very unique entity. Um, it's made up of legislators, community members, community organizations. And, and I humbly have to say that if it wasn't for the hard work that Rachel and the number of the other board members put in, we probably wouldn't exist. Um, and when you get a chance to read the letter, I think it'll make a little more uh, more sense. It's a one pager. I think it uh, uh, is a synopsis of what we do. Uh, and this is something that everybody on this call can be proud of. The legislation that was passed this session that 
involved racial justice was the result of your involvement with this caucus. And that, you know, is, <laughs> it's a very proud moment for all of us. You know, was it perfect? No, but what is? But did it make some very serious inroads in the where areas that we needed to? Use of force, civilian oversight, training, mental health services, oh. all were covered. No, so I, I just want to thank you uh, uh, again so much because I, I know it was difficult for the board to understand the, the unique nature of this group. Uh, it's hard for us to understand and we live with it. <laughs> but that being said, I, I really am humbled and honored uh, that you guys decided to uh, to help us out because it is helping Vermonters around the state. So thank you again so much. Thank you. I appreciate that great description. Next, we have Maria Rinaldi from the Choir for Peace and Justice. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today and especially to go after my very good friend, Coach Christy. Nice to see you. Um, I'm coming to speak to you today about the chorus I formed last fall, Vermont's Freedom and Unity Chorus. And it's a peace and justice chorus where every voice is welcome with a lot of people actively working to divide us up. Uh, the goal of the chorus is to provide a safe space for its members and to bring people and audiences together through music. Again, uh, we met, we began um, in the fall of 2019, which was about the same time I reached out to the Peace and Justice Center to be our fiscal agent. We were doing very good things. We, were, we split rehearsals up between Colchester and Jericho, where I live to try to reach as many people as possible to participate. And I was very excited when our membership got up to 60 people. We had a lot of fun learning the music together and planning for upcoming performances. Um, and then COVID hit and everything was shut down and eventually canceled. Choral singing is one of the most high risk activities out there during the pandemic because you aspirate smaller articles from your lungs when you sing. So we had to stop meeting in person in March of 2020, uh, realizing that the shutdown was going to last a while. Uh, a couple months into it, I set up my house so that I could host Zoom rehearsals online. But unfortunately, there was a huge reduction in participants. Um, we had problems stemming from either internet connectivity, um, parents trying to homeschool their children, dealing with that, or just folks not liking the Zoom experience, um, but there was still a core 10 to 15 members who really craved the community of meeting each week, so I continue to work with them. It's not the ideal way to rehearse. Um, there's latency in the internet, which creates sound delays, so we cannot sing at the same time. Otherwise, it results in what I like to call a cacophony of chaos. So sadly, I have to mute everyone and play their parts and sing to them on my end. But all I can see is their mouths moving and I can't tell if they're singing in tune. Um, but given the fact that COVID is sur surging again and it looks like we're gonna have to stay home longer, um, much longer than I was anticipating, I'd like to rebuild the organization <clears throat> and focus on the online community aspect of it as much as possible. Who knows, we might even be able to recruit some people who are feeling isolated at home. So our next steps are to update the website to reflect the new environment we're working in, make virtual recordings, um, form a planning committee to come up with ideas, develop initiatives, plan events, fundraising, etc. Um, create an online Facebook group for members to share what they're doing with each other. And when this is all over and we begin to return to normal activities, I'm hoping your organizations will consider having us sing for your events. We have a repertoire of songs that will work for any event to celebrate women, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ lives, the disability community, etc. 
and we're happy to learn new music as well to fit your needs. As we begin to make virtual recordings, we would even be happy to work with you, <clears throat> perhaps with upcoming virtual events you may be holding. So that's us in a nutshell. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. Next, we have Morgan from People for Peace and Security. Thank you. I am uh, also known as Jennifer Decker. Uh, many folks know me that way. I just decided to go through a name change recently. So I appreciate everyone just making an effort on that. And I am here from People for Peace and Security. And I just want to invite everyone who would like to come to a virtual screening of two short five minute films uh, called Get the F-35 Out parts one and two on Tuesday night, we're gonna, um, we have a Zoom uh, set up. And if you're interested, you can just message me your email and I'll send you the information. Thank you for that, Rachel. So our group has been working to end the basing of the F-35. And I would say over the last few months that uh, we as a movement have been reckoning more uh, and, uh, continuing to reckon with the intersectional nature of the work that we're doing in terms of militarism um, and the proper emphasis of that work um, in terms of the impact on people's lives in countries where US imperialism and other forms of imperialism are strong, as well as um, the negative impact in terms of ongoing colonialism, the use of oil, on the impact of climate change um, and, and also the influence of different uh, state actors in terms of um, militarized power. So that would include police brutality um, and the importance for our group of standing in alliance with immigrant rights and people seeking asylum in this country. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, shifting, I think, and, you know, recently in terms of current local events, um, the, you know, People for Peace and Security has been able to ally with groups to uh, make our movement more intersectional. So um, right now there's a um, campaign going on with a letter to the Inspector General um, about the basing, um, and we're continuing to oppose the environmentally unjust impact in terms of um, the social justice issues with the communities that are the most affected by the basing of the plane. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but <laughs> my ears are ringing. Um, I was trying to record an F-35 over Winooski um, about three weeks ago and my ears have uh, simply not stopped ringing. Um, and we do know that the planes are harming children's development. Um, attention spans and all of that. And yet the flights continue to uh, take off. And we all know now just how horrific it is, but the local impacts are nothing compared with what the use, the planned use of the planes, um, including the retrofitting with nuclear weapons being really horrifying. So um, we have uh, launched a boycott of the Burlington airport um, which we invite people to sign on to and it's voluntary because we know not everyone is in a position to be able to avoid flying. Um, and we have a Facebook page, which is um, People for Peace and Security, cancel the F-35. And um, again, I just want to invite everyone to uh, see and if you can't come see the films, you can um, contact us and you can uh, get the YouTube links um, if you can't come to the event, but please feel free to share the event and you can do that by uh, coming to our Facebook page as well or feel free to message me. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. All right. So thanks again to all of our allied groups. I appreciate those updates and um, I see people are plugging certain events in the chat, which is awesome. I hope everybody who's willing to participate um, actively does so. So next on our agenda, we have introductions from the board, which I will start and introduce myself again. My name is Kalia Livingston. I've been on the board for a little over a year now. Um, I'm the chairperson 
And one thing that I've been involved in recently in regard to the board, um, I actually just was a juror for the Lawrence debate, the, sorry, the Lawrence debate union. Um, one second, my apologies. Um, I was a juror for the Lawrence Debate Union, in which this year their topic was in regards to social justice, more specifically um, about police abolition. It was a very insightful experience, and I think I learned a lot, which I will take back to the board, and hopefully we can utilize in our future efforts to move forward towards police abolition. Does anyone want to volunteer to go next or should I start calling names from the board? I'm seeing Jen here, so we can start with Jen. Hi, uh, I'm Jennifer Charlo Patchelak. I use she, her pronouns. I um, am an attorney and live in Waterbury Center. I've served on the board for three years um, and am the secretary. Um, I have uh, organized the auction the last couple of years that we usually do at our award ceremony at the end of March. And um, well, as we all know, unfortunately, we weren't able to go forward with that due to COVID this year, but I'm really excited to be again working with some volunteers in the office to um, launch an online auction with all of the wonderful items that we gathered. Um, that um, we've just you know, had stored, hoping that at some point we would be able to hold the auction. So um, keep your eyes out for that. And um, we have some great stuff and um, thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, next I'm seeing David. Hi, I'm, I'm David Scheiman. Um, uh, he, his, him, and I've been on the board since Seems the beginning of time, but I think it's seven years. Uh, I'm particularly interested um, right now in working in South Burlington on a fair and impartial policing policy and trying to work with the uh, South Burlington uh, Chief of Police to revise their policy to particularly with respect to lack of collaboration with ICE. And so we are working on that and it's a slow process. Um, um, I guess that's it for now. Yeah. Thanks, David. Jaina, you're up next. Hi, everyone. I'm Jaina Ossoff. I use she her pronouns. I've been on the board for about nine months now. Um, we just had this really great monthly volunteer gathering. Kalia and I actually hosted it with Eris. And it was just a great opportunity for community building. And it reminded me why we do all this. So that was something that I'm really inspired about from being on the board so far. But yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jaina. Um, TJ, our newest board member is here. So let's hear an intro from him. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you all. My name is TJ Singare. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. I'm a sophomore at St. Michael's College uh, and I've been on the board for about a month now. Um, and despite my short time on the board, I've really enjoyed being a part of the PJC uh, and contributing to the liberation of all marginalized folk. Uh, to tell you a little bit about what I've been involved with, uh, recently I've been in contact with uh, a woman um, in Milton, Vermont, who's been experiencing a lot of really awful and violent racism. Uh, so I've been focusing on different ways that we can help get her story out um, as well as ways we can help keep her safe. Uh, you know, she's in a horrible situation that no one should be in, but I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to join the PJC um, and offer uh, as much support as possible. Uh, and so thank you all for joining us, uh, supporting us uh, and helping build the uh, loving and inclusive world that we all envision. Thanks, TJ. And last but not least, we have Nathan here. Hi, um, I'm Nathan Suter. I use he, him pronouns. I live in Montpelier. I'm a um, organizational consultant, organizational development consultant. And 
I've been on the board since 2011, which is a long time. Uh, I really love the dynamics of this board and this organization. And most recently participated in a bystander intervention training uh, put on by PJC, which had something like you know, 75 people on a Zoom training, which is just so awesome. And uh, you know, I had the pleasure of I had the pleasure of working most recently a bunch with Joshua on some of the financial stuff. I'm the treasurer of the board, and uh, really impressed with his work uh, to to pull that all together. So thank you, Joshua, and uh, that's it. Thanks you guys for coming today. It's really cool to see so many people here. Thank you, Nathan. And we have two board members who are absent today. Emma Schoenberg, as well as Chuck Brewer. So I just wanted to bring them into the space, even though they're not here. I could speak for a second on what each of them have been working on. A um, couple of the things. I don't, I don't know what they would say they're most excited about, but some of the things they're involved with that I'm excited about, Emma does a lot of organizing nationally in addition to her work with Peace and Justice Center. And she's involved with a whole lot of stuff right now around post-election shenanigans. And she's representing the Peace and Justice Center on some of the local groups meeting around that. She also has helped develop and present some of our nonviolence educational programs. Um, Chuck Brewer, I know, is serving on the hiring committee and has been an important voice there. He also has worked as a co-facilitator for our people of color affinity group that meets monthly. So there's a couple things about them. And sorry that you don't get to meet them, but there you have it. All right, so now we're gonna move into voting for board positions that are up for reelection, which Rachel is going to bring up the polls and kind of describe the voting process via Zoom since this is all new for us. Yeah. So when we, our bylaws state that we do our people serve two year terms and that we present a slate of board members for people to vote on. So you don't vote on individuals, you'll just vote on the full slate. And six of our eight board members are actually up for election right now. Um, and so I'm going to set up a poll that shows you their eight names, no, sorry, there's six names, and you'll get to vote yes, no, or abstain. Um, anybody have any questions before I go ahead and open up the poll? If you haven't done a poll on Facebook, it's, it's very simple. It'll pop up on your screen and you just click your answer. Uh, maybe just in case for those who don't know, um, uh, what does abstain mean? Abstain means that you're not going to vote. <laughs> And if you're not on Facebook. Oh, did I say Facebook? I meant Zoom. It's going to pop up on Zoom. It'll sorry. be in this meeting right now. Yeah, sorry. And everybody who's here can vote, is my understanding. That was a question yeah, in every, the chat. Everyone, everyone who's here can vote in terms of you'll have access to the poll. However, the people, according to our bylaws, who can vote are members. So. Some of you here aren't actually dues paying members. So please don't vote. Um, anybody who volunteers is a member and anybody who pays starting at $15 a year is a member. So if you don't fall into one of those categories, please go to our website and become a member as soon as you can, or you can send a check and Joshua will take care of that. Um, but I'll go ahead and open up the poll. And if you're confused about whether or not you're a member, um, just send me a note and I will try to answer you quickly. Kristen, did I answer your question? I think I did. All right, let's see if this is the first time I've done polls. So, um, to launch. Oh my gosh, I just realized Chuck's not listed there. Um, lawyer Jen, can you tell me, should I make a new poll with Chuck's name or can we just tell people to include Chuck? Um, is, it, is it gonna take a long time to make a new poll? Maybe 30 seconds. Okay, why don't we just do that so we have an official um, ballot that does include Chuck. Okay, sorry y'all. 
let's see. So if we're not a member, do we abstain or just not bother vote? Just don't bother, I think. Are the affiliates members? No, not unless they're also a member. I got to check. <laughs> I could say that groups aren't members, only individuals. So that's another way to explain it. You'll notice in the chat, there are links to becoming a member and to our e-news now. So if anybody wants to be able to vote next uh, year and definitely become a member, you can either do um, monthly donations or monthly uh, payments, or you can do a yearly payment, whatever is best for you. And Josh will be the one that helps with that after you submit your request online. So I have a question. So there's like, blocks of people to vote for how many times like how many i don't i don't understand how it's working well here comes the poll again okay. you can vote for the slate or you can vote against the slate it's presented as a slate by the board so this this is the only slate yes this is okay, the okay. Slate. sorry i was thinking something different thank you oh sorry it wasn't more clear Oh, we can't vote for individuals? That's correct. You vote just for a slate. That's how it's set up in our bylaws. We've actually done it incorrectly previously and allowed people to vote for individuals, but it's supposed to be the full slate. Okay. give it a, another 30 seconds in case anybody's having any problems with that and then I will publish the results. Okay, so unmute yourself and let me know if you need more time. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results. Can you all see the share? Yeah, cool. So there you have it. Our board is confirmed. Yay. Thank you all. Yay. <laughs> we love our board, so thank you. <laughs> I'm happy to continue doing the work that I've been doing. All right, so the last agenda item is up to you all to ask your questions and comments. If you would like to speak, then go ahead and use the um, raise hand feature. However, feel free to just write questions in the chat and Eris will keep up with those and let me know when questions come up. I'm not seeing any questions so far. Are there any comments? I'll just say that I'm really excited about the store and about the online store. And um, I'm just really excited and want to get in there and do something <laughs> to help that process. I'll write your name down, Leslie. <laughs> do that. And I guess if people do have comments or questions, go ahead and take a moment to say who you are, because Leslie's one of our volunteers and a member, and uh, it's so wonderful to have your, you know, have you as part of our team. I'm Shelly Vermilia. Am I next or? Yeah, okay, uh, thanks. 
I don't have time to be a facilitator right this moment, but um, I've been taking the talking to kids about racism and just did the uh, bystander intervention. It's really amazing what we can accomplish on Zoom. So I'm really grateful to be able to participate in that. I'm facilitating all kinds of other things in my life. So I'm, I'm with the work um, and I'm really grateful to be part of this community. Thank you. Go TJ. Um, I'm gonna, I'm raising my hand because I don't know. I haven't had to use the hand raising feature in the Zoom stuff I've been doing. I just wanna say, I've been helping Joshua and I'm really happy he's there and he's really smart and it's a great addition to the staff and the whole organization. Thank you, Joshua. And it's so fun to see your whole face now because we've always been wearing masks, so. Susan, I see your hand up. Yeah, thanks. Um, Susan Schoenfeld, I, I do some facilitating with the racial justice program. I, I just um, have been, wanna say how much in awe I have been and how much appreciation I have for everything that the staff has done this year. For Rachel, for you know, wheeling around and changing her projected future in order to, you know, to keep things going for everybody on the staff's ability to, you know, take on everything it's meant in their personal lives to be dealing with <clears throat> the pandemic and the economic insecurity and the, you know, uh, racial justice crisis uh, that we don't have been there, but it's become, it, you know, it was like, took us and shook us around and threw us on the ground. And I, I just have been so impressed with everything everybody's done and um, the, the good work and the, um, to see you all smiling and um, being, bringing us together like this. I just want to thank you and say um, how much I appreciate it. George, you can go ahead. Yes, thank you. This is George Cloak. I'm in Middlebury, and I have uh, I've been uh, happy to support the Peace and Justice Center for a number of years. My question is, is about uh, what's happening after the election. There are people in Middlebury, and of course, everywhere in the country, I think, ready to, to stand up and demonstrate and protest uh, the things may happen right after the election. I wonder if the Peace and Justice Center is organizing or attached to any of that effort. Yes, we are definitely involved in some of the efforts helping to connect people who are working in coalition with each other. Um, I've actually been working closely for the last couple of days, George, with um, Spence Putnam and Dorothy Mammon, who both live in your area. You probably know both of them on the Count Every Vote Pledge. I think you were on those initial emails that I was on. Well, the three of us have now been working on that. There's a pledge that we're trying to get all state legislators to take so that then Vermont could say, all of our state legislators have signed on to say that every vote needs to be counted and, and that that can then um, you know, that we can take the lead in this country so that if our current president uh, does any of the things that he's hinted at in terms of not leaving office, that, that we're in a good position to, to have already made the statement and be able to push some of the other legislators around the country. There's also the petition going around specifically just for the governor that, um, is being presented tomorrow. And we didn't start that. We haven't been a big part of organizing it, but we've helped amplify it. So there's that. And then there's the coalition work that we've been part of with BPIRG and with Rights and Democracy. And then another group that's being spearheaded by 350 Vermont. Um, Richard Zaplinski is on this call from Veterans for Peace. We started meeting a while back about it. So there's not any one singular plan, but there's lots of groups helping to train people up for nonviolent direct action. And 
we are involved more as a supporter and as a part of coalitions and less taking the lead on things around this issue. Is that helpful? Yeah, okay. Any last remarks from anyone? Not seeing any updates in the chat or any hands being raised. All right, well, thank you so much, all of you for coming and participating here at this event. Um, I hope that you've taken some solid information home with you and hopefully we can have you all participating in more PJC events as well as some of the events that our allied groups shared here today as well. Thank you so much for coming everyone.